Well, here we're ready to do day three of math. And so you're going to work on your IXL for 20 minutes. And then you're also going to do these two math pages that you find in your math packet. And these are called paths and piggy banks. And it's two pages. The front is all about measuring. But this time you are going to be using your ruler that you already cut out. And you're going to use the inch side. And we're going to look at this page together. So find this page in your math packet. Get your ruler out and get ready to do this page together. All right, boys and girls. So we have paths and piggy banks, page one of two. So our little inchworm wants to get from the house to the duck pond. She can use either path A, B, or C. And so you look here, we have our house. We got our duck. And we have path, path A, path B, and path C. So if you notice the paths... She didn't take a direct path. So we're going to use this to answer our questions below. You do need your ruler to measure the paths. And so before you get started, you're going to look at number one. You're going to say, which path looks the shortest? So you're going to look at the three paths and think, hmm, if I was the duck, which path would I choose? Which one do I think is the shortest? And you will circle which one you think looks the shortest before you actually find anything there. So go ahead and circle A, B, or C, and then we'll find out here in just a second. You ready? Okay, now let's look at question number two. Use the inch side of your ruler. Measure each path to find out which one is the shortest. So I'm going to measure each one. So what I want you to do this, boys and girls, is I want you to measure the path to each bend. And again, we're going to measure to the nearest inch, and you're going to mark it. So what I want you to do is math path A, you're going to measure, and you're going to say it's about four inches. So you're going to mark four inches with the abbreviation. And then you have this part, too, that we have to add it up. So I'm going to go right here. I'm going to measure from here to here, and that's two inches. So I'm going to mark that. So when you have it, we have four and two inches. So you have to add four plus two to get the total length. Because we can't do that with a ruler. You couldn't just go like that. Because that would be a different path altogether, huh? So four plus two, and so path A is six inches long. All right, go ahead and try path B. Go ahead and pause the video, and then you can check your work after. So measure path B, do it the same way, and path C as well. And then restart the video to check your work. So I'm going to do this with you. You should have paused the video, and now watch. I have this is about three inches. Don't forget this little part. That's one inch. That's another one inch. Did you get both of them? And two inches. So I need to now add this up for path B. Three, four, five, six, seven. Seven inches. And path C. Two inches. I gotta turn my ruler, line up the zero. Two inches. Take my ruler, line up at the bend two inches, and another two inches. All right, so now I'm going to add, I'm going to skip count by twos, two, four, six, eight. Eight inches long. All right, so now we can see from actually measuring them and adding up the links, which path is the shortest. So I see that path A, I'm going to write path A for number three, because it's the shortest. It's the smallest inches. And which path is the longest? So path C is the longest, because it's eight inches long. Now, challenge question. Use a red pencil, and it can be red, or if you don't have red, just use any color other than black or gray. Use a red pencil or marker. Draw the shortest path from your house to the duck pond. Measure your new path with the inch side of your ruler. 
about how long is your new path in inches is the bottom question. So you're going to look at the house and the duck pond and think, how can I do that? So you're going to want to not have all these little bends and turns that the duck did this first time. All right, so let's do that. I'm going to take my ruler. I'm going to show you a trick. You're going to go from the house and you want to do a straight path. So kind of line it up. I'm going to have a color. So I'm going to use purple. I like purple. I know it said red, but I said it can do any color other than your black or gray. And I have it right there. You see it? I can move my ruler down. Okay, so now I need to measure it. Zero up to there is five inches. Five inches. So draw the shortest path. Measure it. About how long is your new path? Mine was five inches. All right, did you get that? Okay, very good. Flip it over to the back. And then we're going to do my coin graph, boys and girls. Ella took out the coins out of her piggy bank. She made a graph about them. So she has two pennies, nickels. She has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven nickels. And they're all worth five cents each. And dimes that are 10 cents each. She has one, two, three, four, five. And so we have the nice graph with pictures and labels. So let's look at the questions. Number six, does Ella have more dimes or pennies? So we're not adding up the amount. We want to know how much actual items there are, not the amount of money it's worth. So does she have more dimes or pennies? So we're just comparing those. So on dimes, she has one, two, three, four, five dimes and two pennies. So which one does she have more of? She has more, you got it, dimes. That's all we have to do for that one. Number seven, which coin does Ella have the most of? So which one does she have the most of? That's right, they're nickels. So I'm gonna write nickels and I'm gonna look up here to make sure I spell it correctly. Since the word's on the page, we wanna make sure that we spell it correctly. Number eight, how many fewer dimes are there than nickels? So fewer means we're gonna compare the two by subtracting. So I'm gonna see how many fewer, I have one, two, three, four, five dimes. And how many nickels? I can use my chart. I have seven nickels. So I'm gonna write my equation and I'm gonna find the, what do you call, the answer of a subtraction problem. Do you remember? That's right, it's the difference. So seven minus five gives me a difference of two. So I'm gonna write two. And number nine, how much money does Ella have in her bank? Hmm, this is where we have to add up all the coins. Now what they're worth matters. So we're gonna count by tens. Ready to count with me? 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. And I'm gonna add on 55, because they're worth five cents. 60, 65, 70, 75, 80, 85, 86, 87. So how much money does she have in her bank at all? She has 87. Now I'm going to put the cent sign, but I can also write that it's equal to the dollar sign, a zero decimal point, and an 87. Let's count that together again to make sure we didn't make any mistakes. So I have five tens, so let's count 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, good, count with me, 55, 60, 65, 70, 75, 80, 85, and I count on by ones, 85, 86, 87. So I have 87 cents. And then number 10, Ella wants to buy a binder for a dollar. How much more, ooh, big keyword right there. How much more money does she need? Show your work. So if a dollar 
is a hundred pennies. It's a dollar's worth a hundred. We're going to do a big subtraction problem, aren't we? So show your work. One hundred cents minus eighty-seven cents. And how much more is that going to be? All right. So solve it. You can draw a number line and solve it. You can solve it counting on however you would like. Once you solve it, take a picture and put it on Seesaw for your teacher to see. Have fun doing math today, boys and girls.